Dumb. Who? And weird. Podcast. All right. So here we are. This is the Dumb Cool Weird Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about why everything's so goddamn expensive. Yeah. And today I'm joined by, as always, Nick Excuse and sexy. Satan's back. What's up, guys? <laughs> and so what we got going down is, is we're trying to figure out why the fuck is everything so goddamn expensive, but why, but like the, the, the because. main thing is, is like how it's affecting us. Yeah. Now cigarettes and beer haven't changed. Yes. Yep. They have not. That's, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, but damn, cigarettes are $5. Yeah. It's pretty fucking interesting, isn't it? Beer is still the same fucking price. Beer, cigarettes, all the sinful mm-hmm. things to do for your day. <laughs> completely, uh, completely up to the normal code of cheap. Mm-hmm. Uh, house. Well, instead of paying one hundred thousand dollars, here's a uh, three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I know. Remember, I called you earlier today, and I was like fucking ranting about how like everything was so goddamn expensive. So, for what y'all don't, you know, I don't even. I'm not even gonna say that at this point. Y'all already know. Fucking rent is super expensive right now. The rent's too damn high. Yeah, I I was, uh, you know, I'm I'm moving in about four or five months, and I was talking to my dad about um you know that my that I'm moving soon and he basically was like oh well that's unfortunate I'm like why he's like because by the time you move rent will go up by another 14% I'm like oh that's great yeah great to hear that cuz the prices as they are right now is is a bit of a stretch he's like yeah my dad's like yeah well it sucks i guess and I'm like <laughs> yeah it really sucks dad and I was like we're probably going to have to get a third roommate just to make ends meet <laughs> Jesus. i got to give out hand jobs again <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you look at it, I mean, I remember not too long ago, uh, well, I mean, when I was in college, I think the uh, the rent I had was 375 and that was for a huge apartment. Now, granted, I, I, I did go to college a little while ago, but that was up in uh, up in Pennsylvania, and I thought, man, like 375 like, and then I'd have my friends that pay, uh, you know, five, $600, and they're living in, like, big houses, and then I come yeah. back home, I come back to Georgia, and, oh, I mean, I was in North Carolina for a while as well. But uh, we would have a three, even, yeah, North Carolina, so a uh, three-bedroom house. Uh, we were renting for like $1,000. Come back home to Georgia. Uh, I think my first apartment when I came back were for, yeah. a, for a studio was in uh, Buford, which is on the outskirts in the suburbs of, of Atlanta. Uh, and I think I was paying 1200 which, are, mm-hmm. yeah, eleven ninety five. That's what it was. I was pissed. Yeah. You know what's crazy is my friends were, they were renting a house for $400 in Gainesville. Which is another town that's just kind of in the mountain, near the mountains, where the moonshine and uh, the Burt Reynolds rape happens. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. but uh, That's special. Yeah, you know, uh, deliverance style. Yeah. Oh, my God. But, uh, it's not that bad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's like, Salonica. Smells like, it smells like chicken shit all the time, but it's not that bad. Yeah, but you hey, you'd think that that would lower the rent cost. You you would think so, and I but, can tell you, I, I, we, you know, I, you know I, we, we both live in, in Gainesville. Yeah. And uh, I, Wes, did you... Did you ever live in Gainesville? You went to UNG, but... I lived in Oakwood. Oakwood. So sometimes I would visit Gainesville, but I mostly lived in Oakwood. Yeah, so... Yeah. I mean, you look at it. I mean, I, I could say you're living there. Now, I, I don't live in the city. I mean, in, in the city, I don't know. I'm if, next to Burnell. It, yeah, you're next to Burnell, yeah, which is a very nice college. Um, I don't ever smell the chicken shit. I do. Uh, you do? I smell it, and I see him in the morning, too. Well, like when I'm coming to the... If I'm coming to the gym, or if I'm going to class a little early, mm-hmm. you see him out there, and you're car just gets that like if you get behind there you're screwed i i just don't smell that stuff very often now when i'm at the gym I'm, uh, me and me and nick uh both go to the same gym uh when i go to the gym now granted don't mind go later than you because you go way too damn early Is it, uh, four in the morning you know you got to go on that jocko willink level like motivation david goggins nah, run three thousand nah, miles you're good you you, <laughs> you, you you do you boo uh no i go there and i'm like i don't smell it no, I mean, occasionally I do, but it's not that bad. But I live far enough – I still have a Gainesville address, but I live far enough out of the town. Yeah, that you don't smell that, it. That one, I don't have I, – I, I mean, I don't smell it. I don't have to deal with it. Uh, it's still pretty out there. Uh, it's you know I don't have to worry about the crap of Atlanta like Wes does. Uh, but I'm not in the mountains either where I don't ha- I don't hear banjos. You have to go to like Banks County or White's no, County. You, gotta go to, to you just got to hit the Blue Ridge Mountains. You oh, go man, deep yeah. enough into the mountains, pucker up that butthole – because it's happening. Fuck, dude. It's <laughs> graphic. But, yeah, you know, I'm for, you know, the rent is lower up there because they expect you to get banjo fucked. But, you know, uh, in my area, the the rent went up by 10% last year. And the year before that, it went up 8%. So, 
So it's been getting harder to pay the rent alone on just like my, what I make in my disability, for example. Cause like, because I was used to get the, I used to get the housing allowance and everything, but I don't have, I don't get the housing allowance because I don't take enough classes. Maybe you need to take more classes. There's no more classes to take for me. This is like. So I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, Nick has literally taken every single class at UNG. Yeah. Every every single one, dude. He, he when he was doing his uh, sexuality class, uh, women's sexuality class, he was a little confused. Uh, he would show up in dresses, uh, which made a lot of people uncomfortable. It it did. It did. It, uh, Wes was really confused for a while. A Sexually, bit. a little bit. I was a little confused. But I mean, you look at it just uh, when it comes to like how much everything costs. Look at uh, the inflation of just this year. I mean, it's pretty yeah. common that inflation. Uh, it goes up three percent every year. Uh, this was the highest year uh, in like in, in, in our, our normal what, yeah. last thirty years or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, it went up like between like seven or nine percent, something crazy like that. And people don't think about that. That they, they're like, oh, that's not that high. Seven percent, it's not that bad. And then you realize it's like a hundred extra dollars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it gets real. So what, what's going to happen? I mean, these companies, and I can't fault the company. I mean, you know. Uh, they need to make money to be able to keep on running because everything's the, gone up. Even electricity's gone up, fuel, everything. Thanks, Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you were thinking about I it. I was trying really hard not to say that, like uh, really hard. Um, but don't yeah, worry, we can edit it out in post. Nah, it's too perfect and too accurate. So we, we were we're pretty much vowing to be honest, yeah, and accurate. I mean, uh, I mean, but at the same time, the, a lot of these like corporate like uh, areas that uh, that these corporate landlords, you know, that's what they do. I mean, when I lived in North Carolina for four years, granted, if you're near a base or in one of those towns, you're paying you're paying in a rent controlled area. But I love knowing that the rent went up slightly. Mm-hmm. In a uh, on the old house I was at, it's now eight fifty instead of eight hundred dollars a month. I'm like, damn, they're really breaking the bank there. Uh, by the and I was renting a house with two bedrooms, one serious bonus room that I was able to turn into a gym. I had a lot of like backyard to play around in, you know, when uh when I had to go out for walks and such. Did you, did you catch that? He's like, I had a backyard that I get to, I got to go play around in, like. Like, I like played he's, football like by myself. A, like he's a five year old. Like he has a five year old. He goes, I got to go and play with my five year old. And I'm like thinking to myself, man. You playing catch? What, you I'm playing guys, catch with myself. <laughs> I, you neighbors bet you play, were, I neighbors bet you were played fucking catch with some of your Marine Corps buddies. And I'm not talking about with a, well, maybe with a ball. <laughs> there was <two>. a ball. <laughs> I did yeah, go to two. <laughs> Always the catcher. You know what? The catcher gets the most protein at the end of the night. <laughs> oh, God. If we don't get like a an email from this, <laughs> <laughs> at least one angry. Somebody please send us an angry email. Um, please one. <laughs> I mean, I've, been, I've been I've been hoping for an angry email. You know the thing is like I would, I th- I think the whole situation with this rent. I think it's not just Joe Biden. I think it's our government in general. Well, to be fair, also they we we don't have like true capitalism anymore. Like guys like Ron Paul used to say, <laughs> we live in a country built on corporatism now. And yeah, these are so. all these these aren't like your like when I was living in North Carolina, I had an actual landlord. You know, a guy that li- that lived near the area. He was like right behind my house and if I needed anything, he'd fix it and it was it wasn't any problem. Nice guy, right? Now I have to send in like a shit ton of service requests for everything, then they got to go get get approved. They're fast, but it's weird that not once in 4 years did my rent go up in North Carolina, but every year I'm getting screwed out of a hundred extra dollars. Mm. And then I still have to pay for all the rest of my utilities. Sounds and, about right. So I don't think it's necessarily a presidential thing like you're saying. I think it has everything to do with the fact that the company knows that it could squeeze more money out of people and by moving you out, they can have somebody else come in who's able to pay the well, next Extra I, w- fees. I love the reaction that the older generation is having towards this. You know, I was talking to my my mom, who's a baby boomer, uh-huh. and you know, I told her I was like, you know, part of the reason this is happening is because of you guys, like the baby boomers. You're you know, not, they're not dying fast enough. Yeah. Well, the thing. Well, it's, it's not. <laughs> they just, live too long. Well, it's not just that. I th- I think that um, they're disconnected. A lot of them. So you know, I've been doing a documentary for about two years now. Yeah. yeah. And I've been interviewing baby boomers, and every single baby boomer I've ever interviewed so far 
has been really shitty towards our generation, which is really fucking weird. It's you know? very rare that we find it's one who doesn't. Well, I mean, you think about that. I mean, we're we're we're, we're literally their kids, mm-hmm. uh, and it's kind of an irony thing. Maybe they realized that they did a shitty job raising us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm glad to say though that. You know, our generation at least didn't have the social media to ruin us. Well, I mean, we're we're in the, we're half and half. We're, we're half, half no, and I half. Mean, I mean, mean, we're half and half, but it's like we didn't have enough of it that it could have ruined us like early on to make us degenerates. Well, it's like we found other ways to become. Well, it's like I was talking to my mom earlier, and I, I told her I was like, you know, I was like, hey, you know, we just literally got out of a pandemic <clears> where people were forced to not work, and now they're raising the rent after, right after the pandemic. I was like, that's trying a, to compensate. I was like, that's kind of. I was like, that's kind of fucked up, you know. Um, and she was just like. Well, I guess that's just the way it is. Oh. <laughs> so, and you know what? She doesn't have to worry about that because guess what? She lives in a house where she has a mortgage. And that she's been paying on that mortgage. Yeah. Ideally, more likely, for like the last at least 20 years. She's on probably her last five to ten year stretch uh, of, of not you know, having paying to it pay off. That. No, and I, and I commend that, and I think that's great. And, and, and to, to a degree, I, I kind of agree, like, well, that's just how it happens. And, I mean, I get that. And, I mean, I'm not trying to stop me. That made me, like, sound like I was, like, making fun of her. But, like, no, but, I mean, I, to a degree, I do agree with that. But at the same time, like, you have to be – like, when you're forced not to work – now, I was blessed. I mean, I, I could say right now, I, I lucked out. I was able to work the entire time. Uh, yeah, I, I, was, I, I was able to work, too, um, you know, because I work, I work in the medical field. Mm-hmm. And during the pandemic – the medical field was booming. Oh yes. yeah. I, I mean, I did too. And that, uh, I was like, yeah, okay. So like I had a level of job security now at the same time, uh, I do look at my friends and I will tell you there's, there's been many of my friends where I wanted to throw punch them. Uh, because like, here I am, I'm going to work every morning at seven. And then there was plenty of times where I didn't get home until eight o'clock at night, uh, to, to make not bad money, but not great money either, because I mean, we're, you're locked out in the medical yeah. field during that time frame. You're just, it is what it is. Mm. Uh, and then I'm like looking at my friends and I'm like, Hey guy, like they're like calling me. They're like, not knowing, not knowing what day it is. I mean, they don't know if it's a Monday or a Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they're, they've been buzzed all day because they, they can't work. So what are you going to do? <laughs> you're going to drink, drink, drink all day. Nope. And I mean, and, and really, as a government, that's brilliant because they kept all the, the they kept the the, the uh, restaurant bars open. Uh, they kept shut bar, down uh, all the gyms and rehab centers, though. They did, yeah. Well, not well, not not our gym, but yes, almost every we we found a loophole. No, no, I'm saying, but but they did they did cut, shut down all the re the rehab centers. Which yeah, all the rehab centers were yeah. So we're, well, that was done. Uh, they uh, they minimized staff in, in in hospitals for the psychiatric side of it. Mm. Uh, breweries were still booming. Mm-hmm. Uh, They're still pumping out beer. Liquor uh, liquor sales were, were still there. So what they did is they pacified everybody. They allowed this stuff to stay open. That way, the, the like if you're gonna be home, well you can drink and I'll shut you up. And like then there's me and I'm like all bitter and stuff because I'm like man. I just worked my ass off all day for okay pay, not great. And all my friends are at home and they're on, you know, uh, government support, government support. And all I can think to myself is, yeah. man, uh, I, I, I would, I would love to have a, va- at least a vacation. I, I mean, I looked at it. I haven't had a vacation in, I don't know, maybe three years. Not that I'm complaining. That's, that's being an adult, but I mean, I had friends of mine that went literally on vacation while during the pandemic Yeah, and the government paid for it. I'm like, you mothers. I I fucking hate you. I'm gonna break into your house. I'm gonna steal your shit because you at least deserve that. <laughs> but I mean, I, I got a little lucky because of the first six months of the pandemic, I was still in the Marine Corps, so I was getting paid, and I mean, I still had to go to work. But at the same time, I'm still getting paid really good money. But and my and my wife uh, got on the uh, disability after she lost her job. Mm. But I'll tell you what, the, the compensation in North Carolina was not like great. It was. It, it helped out though when it came to really getting the groceries at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You look at what, what happens in uh, in North Carolina. Okay, so like, I mean, I lived in North Carolina for years. I was stationed there and all that fun jazz. Uh, I mean, I feel like the BAH and the BAS was pretty comparable. Yeah, you know, I feel like the pay was pretty comparable for the state. Yeah, uh, and then you come to here and you look at because you know when you're on disability or you're getting some uh, your your um, Getting some kind of handout that I would do not call. I wouldn't it a call it a handout, oh but God. you get what I'm saying. Uh, you're getting you're getting the, your benefits of being a veteran. Yeah, yeah, uh, I know. Whether I mean you're you're in school and you're with a, with a VA loan, 
whatever your that that yeah that house that that housing really saved my ass because the fact that I got to go to school. I mean, it's a it's really not. It, I wouldn't even say it's for free because the taxpayer pays for it, and it's like a really nice scholarship. <laughs> but that that housing allowance that they gave me helped me out to like at least cover the rent portion. Then my wife got a job at Amazon, and it went. It things got better because of that. And I mean, like if you, if I didn't have that assistance, I think I would have been broke for sure. Well, do you want um, – <clears throat> actually, that's a really good uh, – man, I should have joined the military. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, you're missing out. You missed out on all the, the perks, as they say. But, I mean, it happens. <laughs> yeah, I thought about uh, – when I was younger, I thought about joining the military. I almost joined the Navy because uh, I have, like, a family history of naval service. So, Wes wanted to be a seaman. He uh, – yes. I can totally see that. No, no, no. And actually, so I, like, I, I totally love it. Now, I, I will tell you, I was at a um, completely like big side note. Uh, I was at a uh, nonprofit meeting on Wednesday, and this nonprofit works with other nonprofits. But uh, it's called Operation Rally Point. Is the, this this one that came yeah. in and, and met with us on Wednesday, and we're talking to these guys, and we're partnering with them to raise money. Uh, now this is like the un, untold truth about like when you get out of the military and yeah. some of that transition. <clears throat> Operation Rally Point here in Atlanta, they go and they um, they help veterans like get housing when they're if they're yeah you know, they're homeless or so, like something happens. Now it's not these guys. Yeah. It's not the it's not the veterans that they 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 they're not going to do anything. They don't give them housing or they don't get them into a hotel to get them <laughs> off the street to you know if they're not going to do something to get themselves. You know, out these of the are situation. Like, these are people who are willing to like work with the system. Exactly, and I mean, and have a job. There's something. Something happened. Something's going on with your life that they can trust you enough with the house or an. Apartment. Well, no, no, they they, don't, they do some verification, but it's it's cool though. So, uh, but listening to these guys, so I, you know, I hear like people are like, oh yeah, yeah, I really wish I would have joined the military, and I love that. At the same time, like you know, when I look at it, you know, there is stuff that you get like with the VA. You know, yeah. There, there's housing allowance, like you know, housing when you're in school or when you're in school. Uh, you know, there's all these like scholarships and all that fun stuff. But the issue that I see is that the military does a great job not t- uh, doing a transition period for when you become you a get civilian. A, you get a week. Yes. You get a you get a week of classes. <clears throat> but. Well, I mean, when I graduated uh, when I graduated college, <clears throat> I almost went into the Navy as an officer. I was going to be a... Uh, that would have been smart, though. You'd have been an ensign. <laughs> yep. Ooh. Sorry. Yeah, it would have been an ensign, but it would have been it would have been nice. Uh, you know, I went and talked to the officer recruiting program, and they were just like, "We want you to lose like thirty pounds." And uh, did you say I want you guys to lose thirty pounds? Like I'd have been like fat asses. <laughs> Honestly, when I walked in there, they all kind of were kind of kind of husky. Dude. I know. I'm I was always joking. I was a joking. No, no, the navy. Uh, a lot of naval recruiters. You got you got a lot of them there. Just like. You can tell, like they're <laughs> you're just like it's like, not, it, like you really took recruiting duty seriously by eating all those cheeseburgers. But I but. could tell, I could tell that because uh, like when I went there to the officer recruiting place, they mm-hmm. had officer recruiting for the Marines, mm-hmm. the Navy, and the Army there. And you realize like the Navy are a lazy sack of shit. Shit, dude. <laughs> that is definitely an easier branch of the military versus the other ones. <laughs> and that's why I went to them because I was like, dude, those guys look like they're chilling. I kind of want to do that. Well, I, so I had a buddy of mine that when he got out of high school. Uh, incredibly smart, smart guy. I love this guy to death. Uh, he was like two years older than me, but when he got out of, uh, out of the, out of, out of high school, he could have gone to any college he wanted to. He would have got a great ride if he, if he really wanted to, but he was like, oh, I'm going to go in the Navy. And, uh, I thought it was funny because he, he did so well on his ASVAB that he was able to pick up a job in uh in uh like nuclear mechanics or something so, I don't know, something i'm not going to understand yeah and uh which is a hard program to get into i mean you have to be like smart incredibly yeah incredibly intelligent so i mean he he was like all right six months i'm, I'm gonna go into boot camp you know and uh i'm, I'm gonna I'm, you know i'm gonna get my, my ass beat and all this other stuff and so he worked out i mean this guy ran like five miles a day he was in yeah. like the gym he i mean he did a great job and i remember seeing him after he got out i was uh him and I were he, he he came home for like a month or two, and uh, him and I were hanging out a lot during this time frame. And I, and I look at him and I'm like, dude, you looked. I'm not trying to be a dick, but you looked better before you went into the navy. And he goes, yeah, I know. I gained 15 pounds in boot camp, and I wish I could say it was a muscle, 
He goes, I ate so much. We barely, he goes, I shot a gun one time. And I'm like, <laughs> he goes, I shot a gun. I qualified with it. And I never saw a rifle again after that. And I'm like, damn. Like, that sucks. Like, I'm thinking, like, you're going to the military. You're yeah. like, man, I want to at least blow something up. <laughs> now, uh, he, he, he did just retire. I have to give this to him. He did his time in the Navy uh, in a nuclear sub. Then he went and uh, literally transitioned from the – got out of the Navy and transitioned into a job making $200,000 a year. See, here's the thing. My job would have been really easy. They were going to hire me on as an officer – Running, basically helping run like the uh, media department. Oh, the propaganda wing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Combat camera, though, apparently, hey. like people was, who get combat camera love the love their job. Dude, yeah, I, I commend that. I could I could totally see you do that. Now, granted, you pick the navy, so what? Like you're gonna go and follow people like to like the Thai whorehouse. And exactly. This is how you get rid of VD. <laughs> oh my God, you're gonna be making the VD films all that. <laughs> VD films by Wes. <laughs> it's like a roll, like roll up to like a port, and they're like in the. the, the All right, um, gentlemen. The, 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 ca- the captain's like, "Well, here we are. We're at the port. Look at these fuckers going off the." <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. What well, you, you, you run like an old timey navy, like a like film from like the 1950s. Well, boys, make sure to wear to wear these here prophylactics. You don't want to get the venereal disease. <laughs> I can totally see Wes doing that. Oh, dude, I'm telling you, the, the military probably would have been more enjoyable if we would have brought back like the 1950s or 1940s, 1950s like educational film, like. Hey, Johnny, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I'm like, all of a sudden, be like, I want to be in the Navy, Dad. Like, I mean, how great well, would that be? <laughs> like, I mean, it'd be funny. It'd be, like, all retro and shit. People would have been like, you know what? Hey, look, I'm getting PTSD, but it's ha- I'm having a blast getting there. <laughs> Woo! And this is why we drink now. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. It's like it's like, a, it's like when it comes down to it, it's like all the... Like when you say like I wish I joined the military, it's like it's like like uh, to go on the whole thing about the perks and everything. It's like it's cool about, and all. He's about to talk about all the dick he got. No, no, I didn't get enough. That was a problem. I was gonna say is the, the immense amount of pain I'm in most days. Well, my grand my grandfather on my dad's side was a merchant marine. No shit. Yeah, that's a pretty badass thing though. You know, I feel like uh, I feel like merchant marines, man. Like they're like they're like military light. But, but like in a good way. But like, they have to like stay there forever. <laughs> forever. My yeah, gra- like, but like, my like, but my grandfather was at uh, World War II D Day on a on a ship. See, yeah. that's what's so cool about it. Like <laughs> this is like the stuff you don't hear. All right, you're a merchant marine. You you, you have to be a bigger badass because yes, the army's on these boats. Well, well, no, no, because like <laughs> look, you're on a boat and it's D Day. Shit's being flung at you. Oh, but you have no guns. Like. Ooh, let me just move this shit out. Oh, no, that's the thing. It's like, suck. It's, like, it's like, Grandpa, what happened? Well, I brought the boats in, brought them back out, and I kept doing it a bunch of times. A lot of guys died in front of me. <laughs> Never going to unsee that. You know, I think my favorite thing is, is that there's uh, there's been several pauses in this episode where nobody says anything, but everybody looks at each other like, oh, fuck. Like, did that motherfucker just say that? Yeah, nope. and there's nothing you can do about changing it. Nothing. It's gonna stay. It's gonna stay. Uh, now, granted, most of the time it's because Nick says something really fucked. But you know, to be fair though, uh, you know, you know, you're thinking about it. I'm just saying. I'm, it. I'm not gonna deny. It. I mean, it's it's like when I say, look, Michael Moore. He he looks like a, a fart smells. We all think that. Yes, we all know. I mean, like, I, there's been times where I've seen like one of his movies pop up. Some for some reason, Has like on HBO. Any, has he done anything on the housing market? Oh, I mean, I mean I'm sure it's that he it's, lied about. <laughs> I'm sure he's gonna blame it on on one political party, which it's the same one every single. Apparently, only one political party could ever do anything wrong. <laughs> but it's cool because I mean, Michael Moore is uh, never gonna show up. Oh, well, he's a band. He's a bandwagon, dude. He is a band. You know, it's still, hey, Michael. He's a grifter. Michael, he's a socialist grifter. Michael, again, please just, like, write us and let us, like, you're yeah, invited. He, uh, <clears throat> he loved Hillary Clinton at one time, and then he hated her because he liked Bernie. And, and then, then he hated Bernie. And then he hated Bernie. That's, like, it's really bizarre. When he hated Bernie, who did he go with then? Was it Hillary. Hillary? It could not have been Biden. No, no I think he went, like, I, went, I, think I don't he think went it was straight, Biden. I think he went straight Biden, so, or at least, like, compensated <clears throat> with Harris. When K- Campbell I, Harris. I just remember. I just remember the last election. I was like looking at the candidates, right? Mm-hmm. 
And I was looking at the candidates, and I was like, man, dude, I feel like Biden is at the bottom of the list. I feel like Kamala Harris is, like, above him. But, and, like, I feel like I, I always I, – I that's, what, that's what I said. I was like, I feel like they're at the bottom. And then I, I like, looked at my friend. I was like, man, I bet, like, those two are the ones that are going to get picked. And sure enough. Well, yeah, you look at the people that they, they went over. And I'm like, like I think to myself, no, don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, hang, on. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. We'll go to her in a second. We'll go to her because she's an anomaly. Uh, yeah. But we look at, like, some of the rest of them. And I'm, like, thinking to myself, man – like all of them are pretty awful, but definitely Biden and Harris, the worst. They're definitely the worst. And I'm but, like thinking to myself, not one of them are like, you know, the thing is, I try to like think to myself, what is the best case scenario for whatever, like for, for either party, right? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, Democrats, you guys did a piss poor job this time. You know, it's amazing how you can shoot yourself in the foot and then blame the other party. Yeah, you literally oh picked God. like the two worst people. But you know, you know what I have to say? The debates were fun when Joe Biden was like dementia, but like he was also like sharp. Yeah, he was. He was more. He it's was like really throwing funny. zingers out there. He was like he was like talking shit about everyone when he there, was debating. They were all yeah, but it, and, and they were almost relevant, which is way better than he is now. Yeah, I mean, I think to myself like if you look at like the debates, and then you look at the stuff he says now. All, I mean, it, it blows me away. It blows me away. Like, how in such a short period of time could he got that seat out? They, uh, they really, uh, they really just been pumping him with poison. Watch. We're going to find out here very shortly that that's actually what's been going on is that he's been like getting pumped full of crap. And the crack. I, I, no, crack would speed your mind up. I no, mean, no, no, no. But, but he's so old that what it would do is it cause a delay in his brain where he doesn't know about the words he's going to say. Dude, the, the man got lost in France. <laughs> the, lost in France. Yeah, did you, did you yeah, see yeah. that? Like when he was get... there for the the peace, the uh, Paris Peace Treaty crap. I um, couldn't find he, him. They they literally lost him. Now, like, no, I'm not talking about his aides lost him. Secret Even the Secret Service <laughs> lost him. <laughs> Damn. Like they have one job and one job only. Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. I know we've gone po like political. We're trying mm -hmm. to talk about but... how things got expensive. Maybe it's because this man's in France and not doing his job here. It's amazing how many vacations you can go on as a president. I love that he was able to get this um, a huge wall built around his house yeah. in Delaware. And I'm, like, I'm thinking to myself, man, did, did any other president like build? Oh, I want to know that. I might have to look that up. Well, one president did try to build a wall, and they told him no. But now the new one built the wall, and they're like, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, you can build a wall. As you long can't, as you can't build a wall on, your, uh, on, the, on our border, but you can build a wall around your private Tax residency. dollars, too. Yeah. But the housing prices went up after that. Amazing. Yeah. I think it's uh, that's interesting. Conspiracy. You know, there, there was it uh, uh, during the Obama administration, he was very much on like the, the environment and uh, uh, starting wars with Yemen. Well, I, I mean, I'm specifically talking. Yes, yes, he did start <laughs> a war with Yemen. But I, I mean, talking about like uh, uh, the global warming and everything and talking about how like all coastal areas are going to be underwater in 20 years. Didn't he just buy a house in Martha's Vineyard? Yeah. yeah, he and all the uh, people from Black Lives Matter, too. Yeah, he's hanging out with those guys now. Uh, yeah, all that money that everybody they gave really... to Black Lives Matter. It, and it's funny because if you go to... They uh, found out that they've been finding out recently that it's all been a scam. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, at some point, you got to be pissed. Well, I mean, it's kind of funny because they're all... Like, a lot of the uh, local ones are asking for it now. And this kind of ties into what we're talking about because they had... Like, before, they were able to gather resources from Black Lives Matter... Which would help their community, but now you know they, they just don't get anything anymore, and they paid into it. Well, you look at uh, you actually look at any any nonprofit. You can go and see their books. Uh, by law, they have to they have to disclose that. They Black Lives them. Matter is uh, if you look at where their money goes, it goes into the DNC. Uh, so it goes mm -hmm. it actually goes into the, the Democratic Party directly, and it's really funny because all I can think to myself is like, man. Somebody snowballed you guys, like like truly snowed you. On top of that, if you go to Antifa.com, a lot of people don't realize this. If you go to Antifa.com, it actually forwards you. I don't know if it still does. I got to look that up. It used to forward you to the uh, the White House page after Biden took office. So That's interesting. I think it was uh, in Illinois. They just found out that their uh, representatives had been sending the uh, housing relief funds to uh, Black Lives Matter and the Democratic Party. Well, let's check this out. <clears throat> All right, oh. so I just I just did it. I just checked. You did it. All right, so Antifa. dot com. All right, so you're my little verification, right? Antifa. dot com. All right, go. 
Bam. <laughs> Straight white. to the White House. Yeah, and uh, I think that's hilarious. Guys, because... we're gonna we're gonna get disappeared. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Just uh, so we know, so everyone knows, we didn't kill ourselves. So everybody understands. I'm a very <clears throat> happy. Oh, oh, oh! It, you know what time it is? What? It's beer thirty. Oh. Oh, nice. Uh, so, Wes, would you tell us about this uh, this magical Happenweizen that we were drinking today? Yeah, so it's called uh, Perlin Bacher. It's a Hefenweizen beer directly it's, uh, from Germany. Let me see. Let me see. You have to you have to really get into it, like Perlin Bacher. <laughs> so yeah. we, we started off, we're actually drinking two beers today. Uh, there's this one, and uh, hey, Nikki, will you uh, oh, tell yeah, us? Oh, uh, yeah, Simpler this? Times. Simpler Times. Now, this is like the fun. Simpler Times from a simpler era that so your the, parents grew up in. So the, so the recipe is from Germany, but it's brewed in Brooklyn, New York. I love that. That yeah. makes me so happy. Yeah, so it's an original recipe from Germany that was imported here. Sounds like another beer. That's yeah. super domestic. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Now, cool thing about what I will say about this bottle, and I like this bottle probably more than almost any other bottle. How how many ounces is that? How, or is that's ridiculously big, though. Yeah. So this is a pint, which is 500 milliliters for all you metric people out there, and it's uh, one. It's 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 basically 16 ounces, so which is a traditional um, like pint that you get over in Europe. Absolutely, and that, this is my favorite the thing. Pints like, are bigger there. You you look you look at this bottle and you're like, damn, that bottle is beastly. Like, you have your uh, a regular bottle is what twelve ounces? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, this is so you're looking at sixteen. Uh, I think that was just a hair over over a pint too. Uh, I mean, it, it's definitely. I'll tell you, I, I, it tastes really smooth. It tastes light. It's five point five percent alcohol, if I'm re- remembering right. Yep. It goes down like water, but then again, the. the German beers, they all do that. Yeah, and it's got it's got uh, pictures from the old country on there, and you can see the wheat fields along with the old style German houses from like the Ooh. 1600s. Oh, so it's like being in, in Helen, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. basically. You I'm know, telling you. I really wonder if it, they have like Germany has a <clears throat> Helen, Georgia thing, like, but it, they call it like Fat American Town. Or yeah, so like, so at some point we'll have to go and actually like get some pictures so we can like post it on, on yeah, this. Absolutely. Uh because Helen is such a neat little town. Now it, it, I remember when I was a kid in, in Helen, uh you, there's all these unique shops. Now I'm not saying there's not still any unique shops, but it definitely got very uh hipstery. It's a it's definitely it's a combination of German and Dutch, I would say. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But there's a lot of weird like redneck uh carnival like stores out yeah, there. Yeah, and what's interesting though is there's a couple there's a couple restaurants there mm-hmm. that are German owned. Those are great. And German run. Yes. And they're really good. Uh, Hobgoblin is one of them. Yes, yeah. that was actually the one I was thinking of. Uh, there's Hobgoblin, and then there's one down the street, and this German woman who's from who's who's straight from Germany that runs the. He was he was about to say she's from Germany, Wisconsin. That's what he was about to say. No, uh, no, no. I know what you're talking about. So what we'll have to do is come uh, near October. Maybe what we can do is we can do a little a little recording on the fly. Uh, and make a, a, a guy's trip over to, to Helen. Yeah. Yeah, we can take our phones with us and we can basically, while we do our trip, you know, obviously Satan doesn't always want to, doesn't want to be seen on camera because he's not, he's not allowed to. Sorry, guys. Yeah, this but, is the South. He wasn't allowed to technically come back after he lost that fiddle. No. So, but. <sighs> me and Johnny. But you will hear his voice and you'll see me and Nick on camera at Oktoberfest up in Helen. I think that's gonna be fun. I, I, I we're, we're trying to do a couple of little little field trips. Uh, I'm trying to convince these guys to to do a, a um, an Savannah Nick, trip. Yeah, yeah, the Savannah trip. So the that's actually I think that is gonna be so much fun. We we still have to convince Wes, mm. uh, but uh, it's that's there's really a rugby tournament over in March, and uh, I mean I'm I'm open to it for sure. Wes is open to something. Yep, this is gonna get real. And I will say. One thing that's really cool about these bottles is mm-hmm. they're just big enough where if you break it over somebody's head, it'll probably knock them out. Yeah. And it'll actually do a little wraparound effect, too. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. The, I mean, mm-hmm. Well, this is actually, like I said, I love this so, bottle. I, I love the size. It's not your traditional So just American. make sure when you hit somebody over the head, make sure you hit them on the bottom end of the bottle so that it, that when it when it breaks off, it, it leaves it leaves a little bit of a, a noise that's going to hit them in the ear that's going to leave them disoriented. But but also, like I said, this is some good wraparound effect. You see, I think because the Europeans aren't allowed to have guns like we are to just shoot each other after a bar incident. Mm-hmm. You know, they may they weaponize the bottles. Well, I mean, they're going old school. They're yeah, going old school. Now, real quick, so on the the other one, uh, since it's beer thirty, we're we're drinking. Like I said, we're drinking uh, simpler times. Simpler times. It's a it's a pilsner. 
5.5% alcohol. It's coming in a, a uh, 12 Amer a traditional American 12 ounce can. If, it tastes kind of like a really low grade uh, draft be uh, craft beer. Yep, I could see that. Yeah, yeah so because I, I get that taste of like the hops. Yeah, and you can get these at uh, you can get these at Trader Joe's. The other one that we were talking about, the Heffenfies, and you can get this one over at um, Aldi. So, uh, so this Jose's for for next. Audi, mm -hmm. Audi, and uh, uh, for Trader Joe's, you guys owe us a check uh, yeah, for much. us promoting your stuff. Uh, Simpler Times <laughs> yeah. is uh, literally from uh, brewed by Simple Simpler Times Brewing Company in Monroe, Wisconsin. Uh, I can tell you, I've only been to Wisconsin one time, uh, and it sounds really weird to say this, but it was one of the most unique and beautiful trips I've ever had. I was there during the summertime, which uh, when I when I when I say it's cold. It's like fucking cold. It is fucking cold. Uh, and I, I, it was beautiful, though. It was like a, a literally looked like a winter wonderland. Uh, I was there on business, and I saw a bald eagle, That's uh, which was, I mean, don't get me wrong. I see them here in Georgia. But, I mean, th there was this gigantic bird that I'm like, man, what is that from a distance? I'm like driving this Kia. From, my rental car was a Kia. And I'm looking at this bird, and I'm like, that thing is huge on that branch. What is that? And sure as, sure as you, like, you know, like it's this gigantic bald eagle. And then, like, 15 minutes down the road, I'm going through this little town trying to get, like, go these back ways to my, my appointment. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the middle of this town, I'm not even joking, in the middle of this town, I'm driving 35 miles an hour. I look over to my right on the sidewalk. There's tons of people, like, walking around. And here's a turkey, a live turkey running through this town. <laughs> like and running right, right, right beside my car, like just trotting. And everybody's nobody's nobody's even looking at this bird. Like nobody even gives a shit. They're just going. They're they're walking right by it. Bird's not even looking at them. Just just trotting down. I'm like this turkey is running through this damn town. And I'm like I'm looking at this. I'm like, does anybody else see this? Does anybody see this damn bird running through the town? And then I go like a little bit farther and I get past the bird. The bird crossed the street. Literally, the turkey literally crossed the street. Not trying to make a joke about chickens and stuff. Literally across the street. I'm like, okay, I had to yield for a bird. And uh, I go, I go, I go throughout the other end of this town. There's this beautiful park, and this park has this lake. And these people were walking <clears> their dogs. They were, I say, they were walking their dogs. They were ice skating on this frozen lake, yeah. while their dogs were running on leashes. <clears throat> and all I think to myself is, man, how cool is it that you go when you take your dog for a walk? You throw, throw first off, you throw your ice skates on, and you're 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 literally running them on a, a frozen lake. I wonder what the rent was over there. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, sorry. That was my little tangent about Wisconsin. I thought it was super cool. Well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed this beer isn't brewed in Milwaukee, dude. Yeah. Because this is Milwaukee's where they make all the beer, dude. Yeah. It's very true. Well, mm -hmm. uh, after the city got burned down, you know, it's never been the same. Yep. I can see that. <laughs> you I wonder, know, I wonder if they burnt down their all their buildings because of their rent. I think it was the rent. Well. Uh, so uh, that's our, our beer from Beer 30. Uh, this was a Pilsner. I know we, we said in a, in a past video that we were going to use the periodic table of beer styles. Uh, now, I can guarantee you we're going to go and revisit Pilsners. We're going to revisit Hesseweizens, Lagers, Ports, IPAs. Uh, I'm pretty sure Wes is coming up with a game plan on how we can hit some of these exotics. Yeah. Yeah, because we got some pretty exotic stuff up there. I, I, I don't know what the fuck a steam beer is, but... It sounds amazing, Yeah, though. we got to try it, though. Uh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, there's some weird... Like, what is a, what is a dumping mudder? See that up there? It sounds yeah. dirty. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? And then we have something... A Kolsch. A Kolsch. <laughs> no. Sounds like a like Russian oppression. <laughs> actually, you know what a Kolsch is? Kolsch is, uh, I think, is actually... Um, uh, what What is it? Uh, what, what's that Heineken? I think Heineken is a Kolsch. Oh. It is. Yeah. It is. Uh, so, uh, well, it's funny that you say that. I actually had a brandy wine, uh, a brandy wine recently. Uh, oh, sorry, no, sorry, not brandy wine. Barley, barley wine, wine. Barley wine. Uh, I was over br visiting a brewery uh, one Saturday. Actually, Nikki, you were there. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, Left Nut Brewing Company, and that's one. obviously that, that's in Gainesville. Great beer. Yeah, that's a, that's a company that me and Nick have been kind of talking to about sponsorship. Uh, so I've known the owner, Pat, <clears throat> for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, just dude, I'm telling you, the beer's on point. We're, we're probably going to revisit some of their beers because they have some great stuff. But they have a, a but barley you, wine. But do you know some of the guys there? Yeah. So maybe maybe we could like open up the door again because we we kind of like we saw one of their uh, one of their distributors. He came yeah. to uh, he came over there to downtown drafts when we were over there, yeah. and he was like, we told him we were looking for a sponsor, and he was like, oh, when you guys have more episodes, maybe we should talk. So maybe yeah. we can, maybe we can kind of open that door again. Yeah, uh, I, I I see them on a regular basis. I actually saw them recently <clears throat> over at. 
a uh, not downtown drafts, but uh, over at Tap It. It's also in Gainesville. Yeah. Uh, but they have a, their barley wine. It's either like 10 or 11%. That's so amazing. basically, it's like wine, but it's made from barley instead of like grapes, right? If I understand, yes. It, I mean, we can definitely explore that, but I'm telling you, this stuff was like. It's pretty good, right? It's good. Does it uh, taste like beer, but just like a lot more intense? Yes. It's kind of like us. You know what's Dude, it, 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 you, you taste mine. It was, yeah, it, yeah, it was, it was uh, really good. Yeah, you, you and the wife like creature. Uh, <laughs> she, she was drinking something pretty delicious. That, yeah, that, that day. But I, I cannot I, remember. Oh, she, uh, she had the um, their version of a Guinness. Yeah, it was at the Maple Street. Yeah, the Maple Street. So the Maple Street, uh, they have a beer there called Maple Street that is, it's a stout uh, with. You actually taste the maple syrup in it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's so much fun. And they actually named it after a street in Gainesville. I'm telling you, as much as we're going to end up probably talking about Gainesville, we, we, we need to like do some recording up there. Well, but, I mean, uh, eventually. So the uh, FYI, good folks, uh, you know, we, we're based out of Atlanta right now, but the podcast is moving to North Georgia uh, in the next, uh, oh, I would say probably about three or four months, something like that. Definitely doable. And does it have to do something about the rent? Everything to do with the rent, actually. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny that like, that kind of leads back into what like our topic for the day. But basically, like the reason why we're moving back up to that area is because the rent is too ch- expensive down here, and, it and it's cheap. expensive over lie. there. And it's pretty expensive up there, but it's more it's it's more in line with what I'm trying to pay for. Um, but basically, we're probably going to be in between Dawsonville and Gainesville, but that's where our headquarters are going to be at when we do our podcast. So we'll It'll probably. Be- We'll be missing some of the good times that Atlanta has offered us, but at the same time, that area is becoming so like new, and there's so many new businesses coming in. It's this beautiful little hipster city. Don't even say that. That, that makes me. I, 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 I'm out. saying I'm it kind of sarcastically, but I mean the hipsters are fun because they make you feel a little bit better about yourself. So I, I got. Uh, I remember I was over at Downtown Drafts. We're we're, we're going to visit there. I have friends there. Um, I joke about this, but it did happen. Uh, I was there, and I'm hanging out with uh, some buddies of ours. Actually, yes. uh, my my buddy, our, our buddy Eric. Uh, Eric, I know I know he, he's going to be planning on on visiting the podcast he's too our, soon. Uh, he's going to be our porn star, Dirty Sanchez. That's right. Uh, and then another buddy of uh, of Eric and mine, uh, DJ. We're hanging out, and we're hanging out at Downtown Drafts. It's a little later. Uh, I don't even know what we were doing before. We just so happened to all be together. And uh, all of us have like kind of a military background or, or you know of some capacity. And uh, here, here's like the three of us, and we're just so everybody knows, all three of us we're all different uh, ethnicities. And it was really funny because like we're making jokes, like off color jokes. I'll be very honest, uh, they were they're definitely off color jokes. But you know, again, it's that military camaraderie. Um, you know, so we, we say things that are probably a little racy and a little dicey. And uh, this this bartender for them comes walking up to me and at, at, up to our table and says hey i think you guys need to go um you're activating my white privilege yeah <laughs> I was you like, know you know what <laughs> we'll get to that later <laughs> I, I was i was like blown away i was like uh, i thought she was joking and i'm like oh okay and uh you know she's like yeah she goes i just think it's it's just time for you guys to go you know and i'm like well i'm like well i'm sorry but i'm like you know we're just joking with one another and um uh, it, 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 anyways, it ends up like that we just so happened to right before she came up, we all ordered, you know, a, a new beer. And, and I mean, when you have a, a, a pint that you've taken two sips out of, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not leaving until I finish my beer. Because uh, though my rent has gone up, my beer is the only thing that stayed the same price. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh, and our cigarettes. And our You know, that's the thing. I haven't smoked. I don't even remember the last time I smoked a cigarette. Like, no, no. When I was looking at the prices today when we were at Kroger. Yeah. Amazing. They haven't budged. See, you say that, but, you know, I remember when I was in college, I, shoot, I remember when I was in high school, I remember... Uh, Cigarettes were cheap, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, about like, like 90, 90, 90, when they went 99 cents for a pack of camels. Yeah. I was, I mean, everybody, people who didn't smoke were upset about this. So, I started smoking when cigarettes, like, five bucks, so the fact that it had, like, I'm no, uh, like, I'm no longer smoking, but the fact that oh, you're even... Smoking. no. No, I'm not. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm just saying. Like the last time, we really love our cigars. Uh, the last time I did smoke a pack of cigarettes, it's still around the five dollar price, and it's like, it's amazing. 
that it hasn't moved up e- even with all these extra taxes that you would think that it would move even up. like the really shitty packs are still expensive. yeah no 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 like the shitty packs somehow stayed around the one to three dollars like your pyramids Where and palmas. Hell, are you finding a pack of cigarettes? That's I'm going to be honest with you. I know people. He knows people. He, he's smuggling them in. <laughs> y'all, do y'all, all right. So I remember when I used to <laughs> complain about uh, cigarettes being like two fifty three dollars. Now, granted, I mean. I'm I'm fairly cheap, but I remember uh, I I moved into this this house with like some friends of mine, and uh, there were parents. We I rented out the entire basement. I, I love the like I love this arrangement. They, it was actually while I was like young, very young, and, and still in, in high school. Yeah. Um, I remember there was a rule: no drugs, no drinking underage. Mm. Uh, now the catch was because we're in like southern, you know, we're in southern. Part of the United States, we're we're just north of Atlanta. I grew up in Lawrenceville. Uh, if if you were out of high school, you were allowed to smoke. But the rule is, you can't smoke cigarettes. It has to be it has to be cigars. Oh. So I was like, okay. And he goes, I don't care what if you smoke a Swiss or sweet. I don't care. He goes, I would advise you to spend. I remember this was funny to me. You have to spend at least two dollars on a cigar. I would advise you for two dollars a cigar. And I remember thinking to myself, well, that's that's a little expensive, but that's not that much. I remember the last cigar I bought, by the way, was fifteen dollars. Uh, a lot has changed in prices, but I remember going because I wanted to smoke a cigarette, but I couldn't because I lived in this house. Yeah, I remember going over to the gas station, the QT, the Quick Trip, and uh, they had the the uh, <clears throat> Swisher Sweets. Oh yeah, uh, Cigarillos. Mm-hmm. Oh, and so it's a cigar. Technically, it's a cigar. Now, this is what I learned: the taxes on them are different than cigarettes. They're cheaper. So when these mm-hmm. cigarettes were getting like two, two dollars, two fifty, three dollars, the cigarillos, like the different, even the different flavor ones. I used to get the cherry ones. They were uh, they were ninety nine cents, mm-hmm. and all I can think to myself is, yeah, loophole. Yeah, I, 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 my, my 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 the the family I rent their basement from is going to be cool because technically it's a cigar a cigar. But then it's really a cigarette that just doesn't get taxed. Yeah. Go me. I'm super intelligent. Wait, how old were they? How old were you? 16. 16 and you're renting a basement from somebody? I was emancipated. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Little little fun fact. I graduated high school a little early. Uh, and uh, I, had, I, had, I was supposed to go to a Georgia college. And uh, uh, while I was here in Georgia, uh, I was that kid. And uh, I had a fast car. And I got a massive speed ticket. You know, Georgia, before they had their super speeder tickets. Yeah. Uh, they, used to take shit away. They, yeah, they did. Uh, but they had their super speeder tickets. Uh, I'm pretty sure I helped pioneer that rule for them uh, because I, I got um, Pleasant Hill, uh, which is over in Gwinnett County. I got clocked going uh, off of Pleasant Hill Road. I got clocked going 125 and a 45. And... Uh, I did not get away with it. I ended up losing my license for six months, five thousand dollars worth of fines, which back then was a lot of money, like a lot, lot. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I think I had like a hundred hours of community service. So um, I got my license back while I was ba- like the, my first semester of college, which I was. It was only like maybe one, two months while I was in college. But yeah, no, it tripped me out because uh, it sucked. It sucked really bad. But, yeah, so I was already here living in Georgia. I, I, I rented a basement uh, for a couple, like, oh, like 200 bucks a month. But you graduated from the basement. So uh, that's well, a success. I, I sort of did. I, I, no, I mean, I, I mean, you graduated, like, from the basement because there's a lot. The problem with a lot of people is they didn't graduate from the basement and they're, like, 40 living well, there. Well, keep in mind, like, all right, so if I would have gone to the, the Georgia college that I was planning on going, on, going to – uh, back then my room, like the, like for me to rent a, um, a room would have been like a thousand dollars on campus. Jesus. I was paying like 150 to rent the basement. Mm. So I was thinking to myself, dude, I am crushing this. Like I'm going to, like, I'm, I mean, with scholarships and all that fun stuff, I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to be good. And then, uh, I, I, I was stupid and I was drag racing and hence getting clocked at 125 and, uh. 45 in the middle of the day that was probably <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you have uh, idle hands i get knocked. you couldn't get away oh well so my dad used to be a cop and he used to tell me all the time you'll never outrun the the radio and he's right for the record he is right uh so i probably i, I so my dad just instilled to me don't ever don't ever run because if you ever run 
we were going to get in more trouble and all this. So the moment I saw those blue lights kick on, I won the race, but I pulled over. <laughs> to, I pulled over. And the funny thing is the cop looked at me and he was walking up to the car laughing and he goes, I don't know why you pulled over. He goes, I, y'all passed by me going so fast. I was turning on the lights and I was about to turn them right back off. And then I saw you start breaking and going over. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I looked at him and I, I mean, to this day, I can remember this guy. Like he looked kind of like a, an older major pain. And he looked over at me, and he just looks at me, and he's laughing, you know, kind of that major playing, like, ha, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, I'm like, okay. So I looked at him, I'm like, look, if you give me, like, three seconds, you will never see me again. And just when I said that, he starts, he's laughing, and he reached in my car, pulled out my keys, and he goes, wait right here. <laughs> now now the funny thing is because times have changed times yeah. have definitely changed he comes back throws me my keys and he gives me a ticket i'm thinking to myself cool i'm gonna pay this fine he didn't even tell me how fast i was going or how much he clocked me at and really he got me when i was slowing down so slightly grateful uh maybe he was just being nice i don't know who knows but uh, uh he hands me this ticket i'm like oh cool i'm gonna pay this ticket off my dad's never gonna know nope did not work that way. Uh, so he, they sent a uh, – because the registration or the, the insurance was still paid from my father, uh, the ticket went to my dad's house and uh, my dad – like a month later. And I'm like thinking to myself, man, when am I going to get to – like to find out when I got to go to court? And my dad calls me and goes, hey, what's going on? And as calm as can be. And then all of a sudden he goes, ah, is there anything you want to tell me? And I'm like, ah, no, not really. And he goes, so you don't want to tell me about this ticket? Are you getting 125 and a 45? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh no and he goes he goes i'll be there in a week and i'm like oh shit and i'm like man uh he showed up and i, I mean he showed up in a week because come to find out like my court date was in a week i was wondering why i didn't know and uh he goes so here's the deal uh you're gonna plead guilty you're going to tell the judge that you want the maximum fine and I mean, just like all this stuff, and he goes, you're, you're going to pay for the fine to yourself. You're going to do the community service. If you lose your license till you're 18, that's on you. And he goes, you shouldn't have lied to me about this. You shouldn't have been going that fast. I mean, he went off on me and, um, he was right. Uh, I ended up telling the judge all this and this judge like, was like, I'm the only one in a suit. Me and my dad are the only ones in suits. Everybody yeah. else are like shit bags and they're not, they're like in a in sweatshirts and sagging their pants and looking like idiots. Kind of reminds me of my wedding. Yeah, I bet there's lots of people, lots of men sagging pants. Uh, so like, yeah, so he, uh, uh, I end up like, he's not even looking at me and he's like, oh, how do you plead? I'm like, oh, I plead guilty. And I was like, sir, I'd like, I told him like that whole thing, like, Hey, I would like to request the maximum fine, uh, whatever, you know, punishment I want to take, you know, full responsibility. And he didn't even look up and all of a sudden he just stops. And then like, he has little glasses on the edge of his nose and he looks up at me like, you know, and I'm like, he goes, did you just say you want the maximum fine for your first ticket ever? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, sir. And he goes, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take away your license. And I'm like, no, I was like, yeah. And he's like, he goes, all right, I'm going to give you this, this, and this. Uh, he goes, he goes, I'm, he, he said, he's, he's not taking away my license. He's holding my license. Come to find out in Georgia, that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, I ended up getting my license back while I was in college. In nice. another state, and uh, the other state team, <laughs> even the other state was like, "Yeah, you could have got your license anytime you want." They actually never suspended it; they just held it. <laughs> and I'm like thinking to myself, "You're telling me I could have like got a new driver's license? They would have never said anything to me." Yeah. I, I was pissed. They just uh, went for it. Hey, but you know what? I, I am proud of myself. I did do all my community service. I paid five thousand dollars for the fines. You know how much money that is to a, a 16 year old kid? Yeah. Uh, you know what's kind of funny about the uh, about that story along with my, one of my one of my buddies got caught pissing on a Jesus truck uh, sorry a police car or was he pissing on a truck next to a police car either was, way he gets arrested <clears throat> no and they give him community service because he kind of does that same tactic you know where he like shows up makes the right request you know he's dressed up nicely shows up to community service like dressed up nice and he's normal mm -hmm. that they they're just like like yeah you know it's sad that you're here because like everyone else is like a heroin addict you just peed on a car <laughs> wait you don't pee on cars i do. I, I peed on a lot of people <laughs> i i've thrown up on a lot of cars yeah yes. unfortunately one of them was yours yes yes you have did you hear about this but I did, no, I did. I did throw a two hundred and sixty pound man. 
All right. Yeah, that was true. So we left at, after one of our podcasts. Uh, we it was one of the days that we you, you had to get to the, the the your friend over at the bar, oh. uh, and so we, we left. I don't know. Maybe maybe we left at like eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to get back. You know, in the direction of us. You know, actually, it had been like eight thirty. Now I'll tell you why yeah. it was eight thirty because we're trying to get back up to Gainesville. But on the way, I'm like, hey Nick, let's uh, let's stop to grab something to eat. And he goes, cool. You get the beer, I'll get the pizza, or I'll get the dinner, yeah. whatever. And I'm like, yeah, cool, I'll, I'm game. So uh, we, we stop at a restaurant. I'm not going to say the restaurant's name. I, I love promoting restaurants, but the reality is this place, the food's kind of shit. So uh, and, we, we uh, yeah, oh, let a lot of things oh go my on. Gosh, the, you remember the uh, the we, Israeli, the Scotsman, oh, and no, no, the no, no, Ukrainian? No, 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 we'll get we'll get to that. No, the, <laughs> uh, the the um, the the Korean restaurant that I wanted to. Take oh, that you they to. that they racistly told us they wouldn't serve us. Yeah, man, it was a it was an Asian fusion bar. Like I've been there before, and the food is like pretty amazing. Uh, so we I, we're, we walk in, we're trying to get served. They're literally setting people down. They're literally seeing people. They see him and I, and when I when I say we're the minority in this in this bar, I, okay, keep in mind, yes, I, I understand it is a uh, a Korean restaurant. When I say that we're the minority, we're the minority in multiple races. Yeah, and uh, so when he makes the joke of they were like being racist towards us, he's yeah. really not kidding. He, they're literally even after we we left, we watched them sit down more people. Yeah, and we were like, you. they told us so they, they didn't even like tell us like, oh sorry, the place is closed. Like place is closed, you gotta leave. And then literally, now I'm, I'm telling you, we know that they didn't know these people because I was there as I'm, I'm I'm like overhearing their conversation. They didn't know them from Adam. They did not have a little ticket, you know, paging them to come to to get their food. It wasn't no. a pick up and drop off either, like a grab. No, they were serving them food, brought yeah. them silverware, drinks, everything. And did not call them by name, so it wasn't like they're friends. Anyway, so we went a couple restaurants down uh, to a not so great place. Uh, I've been there a couple times. I've just never been really it's impressed. Always been trash every time. Every time I've always seen issues, but the, the it looks higher end. Um, so we went there for like pizza and a couple beers, and then uh, we're, we're talking to people casually because that's what Nick and I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know like when Wes is around, when we're we're eating. We went to a bar uh, the last time I was with you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what we do. We talk to people. We have a good time. And uh, yeah, here absolutely. we are. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I that's just how we are. It's you, great. You know, because the beer is still the same price, we can afford to at least have some nice things. Well, I mean, the the you're right. The beer at the last place we went to, that was cheap. It was everything else that wasn't – it was yeah, super expensive. Yeah, think about that. So we're over at this restaurant, and, and uh, as Nikki said, we're, we're at this table. We're kind of finishing up. We're, we agree that we're going to have one more beer. And over I'm, – I'm listening to these conversations these these three guys are having, and uh, it was an Israeli, a Scotsman, and a Ukrainian? It was a Ukrainian. A Ukrainian. Uh, and uh, they just so happened that all three of them served in the military – and yeah. Here's Nikki and I, and we're like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm looking over. I'm like, all right. I look at them like, hey guys. And they're like, they're looking. First thing I've ever said to these guys, never met them in my life. I'm like, I'm like, all right. So I got a joke for you. There's a Scotsman, a Ukrainian, <laughs> an Israeli, and they're in a bar. And I, I just paused. I'm like waiting for like like somebody to say like a punchline. And then all, and all of a sudden like the Scotsman's like, get your ass over here, like you know. And so we're like all of a sudden like we're just sitting with them. And uh, like we 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 abandoned our table, our wait our waitress was confused because she couldn't find us for a second. Yeah, and uh, we're having a good time, and all of a sudden, before you know it, we're, for we're hours. We were hours. having a good time, like, dude, time slipped. Like, here's like you know, I mean, I thought it was funny it was because three we're in the morning. Yeah, it was three in the morning. Uh, actually, it was. You actually slept at my house that night. Yeah. Um. So we were having having this great time, and we're we're doing our thing, and. Uh, Shots are for all of a sudden coming. He's actually telling his wife that, uh, you know, you're, you're telling your wife, you're like, hey, yeah, we'll be home in like an hour, hour and a half tops. And then all of a sudden, like, he's having to text her, which I don't even know how the texts came out because, you know, you threw up once. Uh, and, to be uh, fair, I. Oh, here uh, we go. I, 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 I am a functioning crazy person. Yes. Uh, so here he is. He's like doing his thing. Uh, we're doing shots with these guys. All of a sudden, this random guy comes up and. We're having a good time. Picks a fight with you he for picks nothing. A, he picks a fight with me, and I'm like, I'm like looking at him. I'm like, what? What is this guy's problem? And uh, the guy, like the guys we're with, like they're like, yeah, we, you know, he he comes by us every now and then and, and talks to us. And then, but this guy out of nowhere just starts picking a fight with me. And I'm like, at this point, I'm like, I'm trying to be diplomatic. I'm trying to like just let it go. 
And he keeps on pushing. And I, like, I'm like, fine. At this point, I'm like, all right, you know what? I've had just enough to drink that I'll slap this guy in his face. And I, I'm like, all right, come on, let's go. I was like, let, like let's go. I don't care. And you're I you're love- old, and I think you're homeless. Uh, he was definitely homeless. <laughs> so all of a sudden, like, I'm walking around the thing, and he's walking around. These guys are, like, looking like – like, they're, like, kind of rooting it on, but at the same time it was, not. Uh, it, was the people, it was the people I knew from high school that I was telling, like, hey, you know, just – something's going down right now. <laughs> mm. And I told him to get the bouncer. Yeah, and so all of a sudden, like, I'm walking around, and I'm about to, like, engage with this guy, you know, and I'm like, all right, cool. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere – Here's Nick. He grabs this guy, and like this guy's like a big guy. We're talking about 260, 280, somewhere around there. And this and Nick walks up to him, and this guy has probably about six inches on Nick. Literally grabs him and po- throws him up against the glass, like up against the wall. The wall just happened to be a big thing of glass. Yeah. And like not against the door, against like the panes. So, I mean, it was it was loud. And all I think to myself, I'm standing there with my arms up. I'm like. Dude, I was about to like, I was about to like bitch slap this guy, and like, I mean, I was literally like, I was going in for like getting ready for the fight, and here's Nick literally holding this guy up, and like, and then throws his, you know, his is uh, the blade of his arm up into in this guy, and like, getting ready to like pound this guy, and then all of a sudden the, these bouncers show up. It was funnier though because he called me nothing but a fat bitch. Yeah, he did. And like as you were as you're holding him up, he's calling you this. And but then but then when I raised my hand up, he got like scared. Well, yeah, and that's when the bouncers showed up. Uh, a whole bunch of people in, uh, interjected for us. Uh, I, I don't think I barely. I don't think I said a thing to a cop. There were actually cops over at this bar. It was uh, it was my <clears> friends, <throat> the ones that uh, that I knew from high school. That yeah, I was telling them because I was trying to get them to get the bouncer. Yeah, and to get out of the way, and <clears throat> all that shit happened. Yeah, so here, this is the fun part. Okay, so yeah, bar fights are always fun. So here's like Nick holding this guy, this guy up, and uh, I'm like watching this thing, and I'm like, dude, this is awesome. <laughs> At the same time, I'm also like kind of irritated because I'm like, dude, I was about to slap this guy in the face. Like literally, that was gonna be my thing. Like I'm not gonna even punch him. I'm just gonna <laughs> slap him. How, dude, I'm gonna humiliate him. So like I'm like, but here's Nick holding this guy, and then the bouncers come, they get them all, like, everybody's off of each other, and, uh, and I, I'm now I'm, I'm talking to the bouncer. I'm like, look, this is what happened. Like you know, I was actually about the one. And Nick just jumped in. And they're like, no, no, you guys are good. Go back to what you're doing. And then, like, maybe maybe 20 minutes later, Nick comes up to me, puts his arm around me, goes, dude, yeah, like, like, yeah, you know, I'll never let anything happen to you. I'm like, yeah, me too. Like, because yeah, we love each other. We're brothers and all that fun stuff. And then all of a sudden, like, Nick looks at me and then looks over, the, like, looks at the rail, <laughs> looks at me, looks at the rail. And the cop car is right there, by the way. The cop car is literally, like, over the rail. And what does Nick do? He projectile vomits. <laughs> Over the rail, <laughs> right. I don't, I don't know if it hit the cop car. It didn't. I don't. It didn't. I mean, man. And all of a sudden, I see the cops are watching him hurl over the rail into like, which is like literally the parking lot. The rest is like the the patio section. They actually uh, did talk to me. They're they were asking me like if I was if I was driving home alone. No, no, yeah, yeah. yeah so like, like they're like they're like I'm like no, he's fine. Like as he's still hurling over this rail. And then what do I do? I'm like, hey, go get us a beer, man. And here Nick comes back with two more beers. And all I can think to myself is, like, these cops are looking at me. I talked to him for a minute, and I'm like, no, he's fine. He's had to get it out. <laughs> They're looking at me like, what is wrong with you two? <laughs> now, I will tell you, not, no, we don't, not to, like, to say we were drinking and driving. At that point, I cut myself off, uh, and uh, another hour and a half went by. Uh, Nick and I ended up going to Waffle House. Uh, <sighs> Do you want to tell them about Waffle House? I don't actually remember, but I do remember you telling me to like to talk to like to mess with the guys in the table next to us, and I went and sat up on them with like puke on my shirt. Yes, yeah. Oh, that's okay. And I so, put my arm around them, but no, no, that was tame compared to me. Like apparently, I didn't. I don't remember the laps did, of Waffle did, House. Did he tell you what he said to the waitress? No. Okay, so she was a meth head. Uh, she she was she was missing a lot of her teeth. Very oh. nice. She was very nice. So uh, this was right after he uh, – driving back from, from this restaurant, uh, he down – I had my window down, and he puked all along the side of the car. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting all – because he literally – I'm going to say he puked on the side of my car. See, I don't remember was, that. That's the thing, though, either. Yeah, no, doesn't remember at all. I mean, all over the car. So we get over to, to Waffle House. Literally, I, I'm like, dude, I bet you won't go sit at their table. And he goes and, like, pukes still on his shirt, <laughs> puts his arm around him, and, like, just has this, like, ongoing conversation with him. And, like, I mean, it was, it was pretty funny. But nothing beats when he walks up or when the waitress walks up and uh, he's, she's like, so what can I get you guys? Or what do you want to eat? And Nick, 
I'm like getting ready to say, like, dude, I want the All Star Special. I want my. I, I go. Can, uh, I'm gonna. I'm about to get complicated because I want my waffle slightly like overly cooked, like that nice crispier. Uh, my my over easy eggs. My my bacon medium, hash browns of course. Yeah. Smothered, covered, and capped. What does Nick say? He goes, "I want to eat your ass." <laughs> I'm but, looking at him like, you drunk motherfucker. <laughs> you know, it was more awkward because I don't remember it. And then she was like really happy to see me the next time we went over there. Yeah. So funny thing is like two or three days later, I'm like, hey, I told him what he said. And I'm like, hey, let's go to Waffle House. And <laughs> sure as rain, dude, this uh, we sat down and, and she's the one that's waiting on us. And she goes, I remember you guys. And, and I just start laughing. I'm like, Nick's like, he's like, try, I, you see like the wheels turning. Is this the waitress I said I was going to eat her ass? And I'm like thinking to myself like, wow, man. Like, dude, she smiled really big. Dude, I'm pretty sure we got a discount. I don't know. I'm just telling she, you. I think she wanted me to eat her ass. I mean, you offered. You were like, you were, you were like, dude, I, 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 you, were, you were wanting to go deep on that. I was, I was pretty impressed. I, to, uh, uh, to be fair, it's kind of true that Marines will sleep with anything. Wow. Yeah, that, that is a true statement. So, <laughs> well, and that's okay. So, we're talking about, uh, I, I know we've been, we've been sidetracked because that's what we do, but why? Yeah, we've, we've definitely gone over an hour. <laughs> <laughs> this is a special edition. This is the special <laughs> episode. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. You want to know when things are bad, though? All mm-hmm. right. So, I remember being able to get an order of just hash browns over at Waffle House. Yeah. Uh, do you remember when they were 75 cents? Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. Uh, and it like, it's, it's like a dollar 90 for a single order of hash browns for $2 at Waffle House. I was able to sustain for three days of living, uh, off of the amount of hash browns I was able to get. But that's, a, that, that goes a bit back to the whole th- time, thing we were started on. Everything is just going too much. And the worst part is, is now there's shortages of everything. It's pretty profound. Yeah. <laughs> like everything. Everything. Like everything, yeah. You know, I, I don't really come up with big elaborate thoughts, all right? I'm not T.I. I don't use big words to talk like Colonel Sanders. Yeah. But <clears throat> I totally agree. I think that everything is too fucking expensive right now, and I think we need to really fucking slow our roll on some of this shit. And I think we need to go and watch more porn together so that we can edit it. Dude, I'm telling you, porn is is like you, you set the pay for porn. Not that you you can't not pay for porn. Man. I'm just saying we should all start an OnlyFans account. I mean, the economics. It's that is economics. That's 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 for the. For, you know what? Hey, we we've had like we've had por- we've had a porn star on the show, right? No, we wanted to have one. No, oh. he's not. He hasn't been on yet, but he will be. So uh, I need. I I know somebody that has a OnlyFans account. Oh. Yeah. Why don't we have them on? Let's do sure. it. Hold it. We can do that. I don't Let me, mind. Uh, I'll ask mine, and you ask yours. You know, you know mine. You yeah, you know mine. So yeah, my when I bartend. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, don't, no, don't, don't say her name. No, 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 no. That's, yeah, we that'd have to be make wrong. sure we got to give them the option if they want that public news or not. Um, but I actually know a couple. Actually, now I think about it, it's weird because you I know, know back in the day they would nobody would ever admit it that. Now it's okay. Oh, is that is that how that works? Yeah, it's just okay now. But I can't suck dicks behind a Ruby Tuesday for five bucks and a cheeseburger without being frowned at. That's the problem is that cheeseburgers don't uh, – they cost more now. I'm telling you right now, okay? I'm like Randy from Trailer Park Boys. A man's got to eat. That's true. Talk, Nick. I'm, I, I got nothing else, all right? What kind I mean, of other degenerate stuff do you want me to do? I will I will tie two Four Locos to my hand and we'll see where this says goes. This. He says this every single time. Can we do a special edition where we do the the uh, sidewalk slammer? The, for, the forty uh, sidewalk slammer. Edward, Edward no, Edward forty forty hands. No, no, we should do a sidewalk slammer. What's the sidewalk slammer? So the sidewalk slammer is when you get a forty ounce of Old English. All right. Ugh. No wait, sorry, Steel Reserve. Steel Ugh. Reserve. It's still terrible, but it's Steel Reserve. And then you get a four loco. So you have to drink uh, three quarters of the forty ounce, and then you pour the four loco in there. Mm-hmm. I've done about like two to three of those in a two-hour period. The rest of the day was hazy. 
So how about this? All right. So can we? Can, you think we can pull that off next? The next episode, we we make him do Edward Forty Hands. Sure. What do you think about that? I think I'm cool with that. You go with oh, that. Okay. Um. So the commitment is, hey, we'll, we'll, let's get some ground rules. Okay. Can do some ground rules, right? Uh, he has to finish both of them before we un untape him. It's a good idea. All right. So uh, do we want it to do like traditional, like like Colt forty fives, or do we want to go like we? Do we Maybe do we should have here? to keep my thumbs though open. Well, I mean, we could be nice and just give him two Bud Lights. But it has to be the like it has to be the big big boys. Just give yeah. me some Bud Ice. Keep my thumbs open, and we're good. Oh, you want Bud Ice? Okay. We'll go as cheap no, but, as we possibly Bud Platinum. No, no, Bud Ice. Like the 40 ounces of Bud Ice. ice. They he, still wants, come he wants ice beer, which is the worst <laughs> beers. Yeah. Well, it's because it's they're like really heavily carbonated. Yeah. Well, they also have a ho much higher alcohol. Content. Well, that's what I was thinking. The Platinums. The Platinums are like 6 for 6%. Yeah, but they don't sell them. I've never seen them sell them <clears> in the 40 ounces. Yeah, I don't think they do that. You know, they used to sell Bud Ice Light at one time. Oh, I remember Jesus those. Christ. I remember oh, Jesus. No, no. Hey, we did the Bud Ice. Like, we used to do the Bud Ice 40 ounces. Like, we Let's uh, let's see. That's what we'll do. We'll go. There's a uh, you have like a, a that, that corner g uh, gas station right over there. Yeah, and then they've, I'm pretty sure they have like all the worst beers. So you can we'll walk over there. We'll walk like over I'm there, saying. and what we'll do is we can do a little recording on like on a phone, and we can like record us going in there and grabbing it. Uh, I mean, we can make this fun. We can. I, I think that like the Colt 45s is iconic. That's where it started with, right? And the Magnums. Yeah. I, well, Magnum condoms. <clears throat> that you haven't needed one of those ever. <sighs> Oh, no, it's just for the girth. You, you remember, I'm an eight-ounce can of, like, pure fun. I stretch out the sides. and don't touch bottom. That's right. All the walls are hit. Yeah, that's why uh, it ruins it for everyone else. <clears throat> so, yeah, we can uh, we can go that route, and um, we won't uncut uh, cut him. We won't stop the episode until he finishes. And he has to finish both before we allow him to be uncut. Yeah, but, like I said, I get my thumbs clean. Like, what do you need your thumbs for? Because I can pull my pants down. No. No, it doesn't work that it's way. It's okay. Then I'm still innovative, all right? I will find a way to get my <laughs> pants off. And the only problem is they're going to stay off. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, hey no, the other thing is he can't move seats. He has to stay there. Yeah. So, <laughs> he's not going to get your seat, which is really close to the door. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So, that, look, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be entertaining. It's going to be entertaining. Uh all right. I'm trying to think here. I here we go. I, I think this a, is it, man. I haven't I haven't done a <clears throat> two forty ounces in a while, but I was gonna be like a cruel and be like, hey, let's do like four locos. That's but, bad. Well, here's the catch with the four locos. Yes, it is bad. But here's the catch. It's what, uh, only twenty ounces each? It's only twenty ounces, but the problem is the alcohol's like skyrocketed. <laughs> okay, so you're saying you can't do it? It's you're gonna have energy afterwards. Yeah, but I'm gonna have a fucking heart attack. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's why you got to do the sidewalk slammer. But we're working our way up, okay? We're starting off with 240 ounces. 240 ounces. <laughs> all right, all right. Wes, we're going to do 240 ounces. I feel like we should have started um, at two tall boys because I'm not sure how much Hey, look, to drink. it's too late. He, he said the 40 ounces, right? I yep. can go back up. He, can't, he can't go back. He can't, he can't renegotiate. I'm going to be like Spotify on a Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this is what you're doing. Yep. Damn. And then we just get progressively worse. Yeah, you see, the problem is, is though, is I don't want to die. I have done a lot of stupid things, but so, it's funny stupid. So, like Power Hour, when you used to do Power Hour, did you do it with like the shot glasses with the uh, with beer? Um, I've done a Jaeger bomb. I you lost did it with it. Jaeger. Well, I've done. Um, I mean, I've done the. Uh, I've done the shotguns before, where you basically like uh, you you hit the blunt and then. Yeah, you take a shot that. and then you chug a beer and then you blow the weed out. I've done that We've before. never done that before, by the way. He's just talking about theoretically things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's college, college. We're not. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so check out our website. <laughs> check out our fucking YouTube channel. Please fucking comment, you goddamn pieces of shit. Just hate <laughs> us just a little bit. Just a little bit so we can call you out and then we can come to your house. Piss oh, on your God. lawn, and I can get my buddy Trevor to shit vertically in your mailbox. That's actually pretty impressive. It is fucking That's... impressive. Like, I've seen it once, and the whole situation was amazing. So, uh, again, thanks. Uh, what, what's the name of this beer? The Pearl? Uh, it was the, it's the Perlinger. 
Per Perlenbacher. Perlenbacher. Jesus, <laughs> man. After four people. There's only three of us in this room. Only all four people uh, screwed that up. And uh, Simpler times. Simpler times. Simpler times. Uh, again, you guys are more than happy to sponsor us. So if y'all need to know where to send a check. We, uh, we will do a, uh, if you want, we can forget the Bud Ice and we'll do a uh, 40 ounce from... Trader Joe's for money. Ooh, you know, even uh, I can swing by uh, Left Hand Brewing Company and yeah. pick something up from them because they have some high. You know, oh, you know what? You What's should that? go. You should go real big, dude. We should tape two growlers to his hands. Growler. <laughs> oh my god! So a growler, if y'all don't know, a growler is thirty. Is it no? Thirty-two is the small one. It's sixty. Thirty. There's a sixty-four one. Yeah, yeah. So we're. We should, uh, we should tape two. Well, 64. <laughs> like Nick is like. Let's uh, let's train up. You know, <laughs> Nick is like fuck you guys. Yeah, uh, we're we're gonna put high gravity IPAs in them. <laughs> that's right. Only that's only we, fucked up. Only dude. if we knew a bartender that worked for a uh, place. Yeah, no, I uh, know. So I love fucked up. That's dude. terrible. <laughs> oh my god. Because at the end of the day, you know, I mean, I'm the only one who actually like dies from this. <laughs> hey, look, you're just whining a lot. Man. I'm not whining. It's just. I don't get paid enough. <laughs> None of us get paid. So uh, we, I'm in the negative zone. Oh my god! So yeah, we uh, so we have we, we I definitely have a contact over at Cherry Street. I have a contact over at Left Nut. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I just so having to bartend uh, one or two nights a week over at a uh, a tap house. So we can definitely do the growlers. All right. Um, I'm I'm loving where this is going now. The best part about us moving to North Georgia, yeah, because uh, we all live up there. But uh, I can get kegs. Uh, and, and exotic beers up there on a regular, and we don't have to worry about bringing them into the city. Um, we have a lot cool. of opportunities here. Yeah, North Georgia is the land of opportunity. Also, we can burn things stay down. Stay out of it. it. Uh, yeah. so you want to keep Georgia great? Stay out of it. We're, Make we're, we're, we're amazing. We're amazing already again. on our own. <laughs> wait, wait. Make Georgia great again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I could say keep Georgia great. Uh, the reality is, is a lot of y'all need to move out. There's too many. So what you need to do is you need people. to move out and you need to go on our website. <laughs> and, uh, purchase all our things. <laughs> tell, us, uh, <laughs> tell us how much you hate us. Uh, no, no, yeah. Actually, right. we <laughs> should get the beer costumes and uh, do the other thing. Yeah, so we're thinking about doing a – I'm thinking about reviving my old TV show I used to do back in the day. I did a, did a web show called The Drunken Bastard where I basically would review really shitty beers and I would show my reactions to trying those shitty beers. Mm. And we're thinking about doing that again. So it's like that's like that's like another announcement we have. Uh, I mean, the, the best part about this is is that there's so many great beers here lately, but there's also so many. Bad there's ones. so many bad ones, and the thing is, is like, yeah, what we could do is we could start off by doing the bad ones as a as like as like, like make it funny, but then over time we can maybe start working in like good beers. You know? Do you remember uh, Spy versus Spy? Yeah, yeah. We can do a, uh, a good versus bad. We need to get ourselves a Mr. Leahy. Yeah, no. He's gonna be our booze <laughs> critic. <laughs> I mean, you know, we can definitely do that. We can, uh, we we definitely need to reach out and. Uh, that's, I think we gotta we gotta make it shocking. Like if we're like this beer is a piece of shit, and then we like go to the toilet, and Nick's like, you see that? You see what's in that toilet right there? It's like a turd. Yeah, You're like that's what this beer it's, is. It's like a turd. Really, what it is? It's gonna be like a Twinkie. And no, we threw, like we threw a, in there because like. A, <laughs> no, 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 Snickers ice cream. Snickers ice cream. Why is it oozing out that white <laughs> stuff? Uh, well, that came out of Nick. <laughs> Guess what he did right before? <laughs> Ass milk. Ass milk. <laughs> but uh, why does anybody has, has nobody ever made a beer called Ass milk? Dude, no, you know what? Know. If there's oh. dragon's milk, there's definitely Dude, Ass milk. I remember the first time I had dragon's milk. Why haven't we moved? So. We need to, we need to open up a brewery, not move there, but maybe we should open up a brewery. <laughs> I don't like that. And uh, we should open up a brewery over in San Francisco and call it. And we should we should our first beer should be ass milk. Yes, <laughs> I'm we down. We have to get. We also have to get a a like keg that's shaped like an ass. Well, we don't. I guess we don't have to go all the way there. We could just open it over here in Midtown because you know this is it's weird pretty much the same. Thing. <laughs> um, so it's, it's better San Francisco. So it was it really have funny. That much poop. We were uh, we were driving in today, and uh, Nick and I were talking, and I was like, "Yeah, like, man, like, Midtown is is really gay." <laughs> <laughs> and I love Midtown. Like, I love I love everything about Atlanta. Don't get me wrong. There's some things I don't that just rub me wrong. I mean. Uh, I, I, there's so much about this area that I love, but, uh, it's really gay. It's sometimes it's really gay. There is a gay bar that, uh, uh that yeah, sports bar, but uh, that sounds fun. 
Yeah, no, yeah. The that's game, like that's like they nine. had a heart. They had it took him a minute to realize that like like dude, no, I really am straight. Like I promise you. That's I am hard straight. gay. That's yeah. like that's not like hug the tallest tree you can find gay. Yeah. That's like I mean, we gotta survive gay. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, no, they're like they're like really hugging uh, the lamppost, the the wooden lamppost, really hard, hoping to get a splinter uh, for penetration. Gay. Um, <laughs> pretty gay. <laughs> it's pretty gay. Uh, no, so yeah, uh, I like this. Where uh, Wes wants us to buy a brewery and live in it. Absolutely. It's gonna be like the workaholics guy who bought that house with uh, all the mold. Absolutely. I know Wes wants to end this episode. Yeah. He looks a little to. tired. Yeah. It's okay. It's a two-parter. It's a two-parter. Uh, but, yeah, uh, basically like I was saying, though, uh, you know, check out check out the podcast. Uh, you know, please give us bad feedback because I know we need it. And, uh, um, we need some. We need we need something, okay? Yeah. Um, and just, you know, check out our website, www.dumbcoolweird.com, and uh, we have our merch store in there. And we have all of our clips, full episodes, whatever you want to see. We have all of our uh, episodes on different platforms, audio only. Um, you, you know, know. We're, we're so cool. Can we, I mean, we're like, we're like hopping. We're mm. like a really big deal. Mm. Uh, what if we, <laughs> what if we uh, got like portraits done and we like autograph them? But like really nice, like uh, East, like European king kind of portraits. I mean, hey, I'm down for anything. I'm going to do an 80s portrait. Oh, you know what? The, with the, the the beastly hair chest. Yeah, like the uh, uh, and the and the mold. Well, I like that. Yeah. Wait, I could go for like. Oh, the, hey, you know he's gonna be really upset about that. Burt Reynolds, our our Florida man. Yeah, nice. Well, I mean, he's he's got to be here again. It's true. I mean, he's wait. Now, let's put two forty ounces he's, on his hands. Oh God, that that'd be y'all should compete. Who can finish the fastest? Yes. <gasps> the plot. Th- th- you know what? Hey, you know what, Wes? Here's the deal. They're not, the only Taking time, bets. Their only time they're allowed to speak is if they take a sip. Oh, nice. So but wait a minute. What if I drink be, faster? It'll be, it'll be just you and me. Mm-hmm. And the only one time they're allowed to say anything is if they say they take a sip. Mm-hmm. I feel like that'd be a fa- – and we'll just stop here. We'll just stop and look at them and wait for them to say something because at some point they're going to be so So if I take like a – if I take a chug, do I get like more words? Dude, you can take a load. We know you can. We know. Hey. Protein's cheap if you get it from protein. Wow. And it's not gay. How about this? Seriously, it's not gay. cut your hands loose first if you finish first? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sound like a good deal. I want I want one hand cut after – well, not not off. Just I want one cut <laughs> – on, I want one unrestrained after I finish the first one, and then I can no. really chug that second one. Oh, no, no, no. You have to finish both. Hey, I'm competing against Florida Man. I got to make uh, ends meet somewhere, and I could pee in that glass. He's going to cut his dick. Oh, my no. God. No, I think – no, no. True rules. He has to drink both of them before. But, you see, I was told that the thumbs can be available. <laughs> Every time Wes is like, guys, it's time to end this episode. Herschel Walker, please save us. <laughs> I think it's Nick that's is the reason why we can't end this episode because he keeps talking about this fucking. All right, thumbs. stay, stay. Sexy. He's really excited. <laughs> he, well, because like, I get to challenge Florida man. All right, so the first time you're, you're, you're okay. Here's what we're gonna do. Next episode will be Nick doing it by himself. That I way, he can, I want, I want, I want it, to have the, uh, I want to have the Florida man no, here, no, so no, it's no, a competition. No, 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 you need to practice. You just said, didn't he just say he wanted to practice? I have this? to train up. <laughs> so I mean, the thing is, I think there's a chance he's gonna beat you. Look, he doesn't care if he pisses himself. He cares about the gold, man. He cares about winning. Florida man is not on a level of degeneracy that I'm on. Well, he's also in Florida, so we it have doesn't to, like, matter if here. he's on Florida. Georgia's on better. Florida, on Florida, he's on Florida. How much have you had to drink tonight? Not enough. You weak shit. All right, I'm Let's, just doing uh, what I do. Wes, do your thing, man. All right, Nick, sign us off, dude. Stay sexy. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Dumb, Cool, and Weird Podcast with Wes and Nick. If you want to check out more of our stuff, go to www.dumbcoolweird.com. You'll find our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Patreon link if you want to support us. Also, be sure to check out our merch store. And if you're interested in being on our podcast, you can find a link on our website so you can reach out to us and tell us if you want to if you want to talk to us about something that's really weird, dumb, or cool. We'd be glad to hear from you. Hope you'll stay tuned for the next weird-ass episodes we got. Thank you. <laughs>